Hi, welcome back to Math Smash. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at adding near doubles. And you can see here that we have the word add end, partitioning, double, adding, subtracting, and near double. Okay, so uh, the first thing we need to make sure you understand is what are add ends. Add ends are basically the numbers you're adding together. So here I've got an example of 3 plus 3. So 3 and 3 here, these are both add ends. And when you combine them, they give you the answer of 6. Okay, so you could also say that we've doubled 3 here. So we've got 3 plus 3 and we've doubled it. Uh, and we draw our nice straight number line with a ruler. And we start with our 3 here on the number line. And then we're going to make a jump of 3 here. And that's going to land us on 6 at our number line. So the answer to 3 plus 3 is 6. All right, and as I said before, uh, we've doubled 3, which means basically you add 3 to itself. Let's have an example of 4 plus 4. Again, we've doubled 4 which means add it to itself, or you could multiply by 2 if you want. Again, we draw our nice straight number line and we start with the number 4. We make our hop of 4, and that's going to land us here at 8. So that means that the answer of 4 plus 4 is 8. So, as I've mentioned, you can double a number by adding it to itself, but you can also double a number by multiplying by 2. All right, Any number can be multiplied by 2, just like it can. you can have any number added to itself. And you might find that multiplying things by 2 is actually faster. Alright, so what are near doubles then? Well, as I said, 3 plus 3 is basically doubling. Alright, but a near double would be if we took this 3 and we changed it to 4. A near double of 3 could be 2, or it could be 4, it could even be 5. Alright, so that's what a near double is. It's almost the same as the number you started with here. It's, a, it's close, but it's not the same number. Alright, so another example where we have 4 plus 4, if we wanted to change that into a near double, we could say 4 plus 5. Again, 5 is a near double of 4, so it would be 6. 2 could be a near double of 4 as well, as could be 3. All right, so near doubles, there are lots of near doubles for every number. The next thing we need to look at is partitioning. And suppose we have our question here, 5 plus 6. All right, you always start with what you know. And you should know by now that 5 plus 5 makes 10. So as I said, you always start with what you know. And we're going to partition this 6. Now, partitioning basically means that you break it up into two numbers that, or sets of two numbers, that make this number. So we're going to look for two number combinations that make 6. Well, you should be able to come up with several. There's 6 plus 0, there's 5 plus 1, 3 plus 3, 4 plus 2. We're going to use the one which is 5 plus 1. All right, and why are we doing that? Because we want to get these five these two digits here to be the same. Okay, so we want 5 and 5 because that's what we already know. All right, and then we're going to count on this second digit here. So we have 5 plus 6 and we've partitioned it into 5 and 1. All right, we draw our nice straight number line and we take this 5 and we put it down here on the number line. Now we're going to take this second 5 and we're going to make a jump of 5. All right, and that's going to put us here at 10 because that's what we know. We know 5 plus 5 makes 10. But now we're going to add on this 1. So we're going to have another hop of 1, and that's going to put us at 11. And that's how you add near doubles. All right? So quick review. 5 plus 5 equals 10, and then you just count on 1, and that makes 11. All right? So if we have 7 plus 6, this is slightly different because we can't partition this 6 so that we will get two 7s down here. So we're not going to partition 6 in this sense. Okay? Now sometimes your teacher might say, you can't move these around. All right? In this case, you're going to have to just do this method that I'm going to show you now. So we know that 7 plus 7 is 14. We draw a nice straight number line. We have our 7 here, and then we're going to make our jump of 7, all right, to here, because we're using this information that we know now. We have our jump of 7. That's going to land us at 14. But now we have to take away 1. Why? Because we're not adding 7 plus 7, really. All right, although we're starting with what we know, this isn't really what we're trying to get the answer to. We're trying to get it the answer to 7 plus 6, and 6 is smaller than 7, so we have to take 1 away. And that gives us 13. So 7 plus 6 is 13. All right. Have a look at these uh, three practice questions, and pause the video, work them out, and then restart the video, and we'll see how you did. All right, so pause the video and start practicing them now. Okay, 8 plus 7. Again, we start with what we know. We know what 8 plus 8 is 16. So we draw our number line. We start with our 8 here. There's our 8. We make our jump of 8 from here, and that's going to give us 16. All right? But now, we're not adding 8 plus 8. We're adding 8 plus 7. 
So that means we're going to take away 1, count back 1, gives us 15. So 8 plus 7 is 15. All right. Next one, 6 plus 4. All right, again, we start with what we know, 6 plus 6. And we're going to build our number line using this information to start. So we have our number line and we have our first 6. We make our jump of 6 and that gets us to 12. All right. But we have to take away 2 because uh, we have 6 plus 4, not 6 plus 6. So we've taken away 2 and that gives us 10. I hope you found that useful. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I look forward to seeing you again. Thanks for stopping by.